Okay, guys, this is kind of going to be a big video. We're going to cover everything that I know about AFK Journey that I learned from just playing the game from live. I did not have the experience on the public test realm, so everything that I've learned right now has been a combination of watching other people's content, doing reading, and actually playing through the game myself. You're going to learn everything. Everything that I can think of is going into this video to create an encyclopedic guide of getting started in AFK Journey. So, we need to find somewhere to start. Before we do start, though, if you would like to subscribe to this channel, it would mean a lot to me. I do have a main channel called Excoundrel, where I kind of cover other games, but I wanted to create a dedicated space for my AFK Journey content, and subscriptions would really support me. I'd like to get to a 1,000 subscriptions, so if you guys have the ability to do so, I'd really love for you to just drop a subscribe and potentially even hit the notification bell if you feel like you want to hear more from me throughout this journey. No pun intended with the fact that it's called AFK Journey. So, getting started. Uh, of course, there'll be timestamps in the description for all the chapters, so if you want to skip to a specific part, then please do. Getting started, you're going to be greeted with a tutorial. You're going to just sort of be able to walk your way through that. You'll learn some very basics of, of combat. You really don't need me to tell you about that because the game does quite a good job of explaining. However, I want to start off with some really simple things that you could do to give yourself a little bit of a head start. The first of which is going to settings. Let's talk about some settings that I think generally are going to make your experience a bit better. So first of all, I like my camera distance at far, mostly because it allows me to see a little bit more of the map without going out to the actual uh, the map uh, sort of, I guess, screen, which is quite nice. Uh, in terms of graphics, I'm currently on the PC client, so I'm using um, the landscape beta. I could also go to full screen beta if I really wanted to, but I'm using the landscape beta because it's obviously allowing me to have my little uh, overlay over here to the side. There are a couple of other things that are worth noting. Um, when it comes to battle, I... Okay, this is the big one. Play ultimate animation. Originally, it was set to random for me. Now, for a new player into the game, you may want to experience these ultimate animations from your, uh, your heroes as they are fighting. But I can tell you, as someone that's now played probably 300 or 400 battles since it relaunched, it gets annoying really quickly. I have it set to never, um, simply because I just like the kind of instantaneous casting rather than having to go through this big like a like every time something happens or like, oh, what's in this pot when you're using Smokey and Mirky? Like that happens and it gets annoying real quick. Um, tap to cast ultimate. You definitely want to have manual control on there uh, and you want to have the ability to have auto battle settings uh, ready to go because auto battle settings, most of the time you can breeze through a lot of content with auto battles. The manual uh, battle settings only really come into useful a little bit later down the line. Those are kind of the most of the, the settings that I think are, are important for you to know. And the, the big one really is play ultimate animation. All right, so promo codes. Here we go. This is a great one to get started. Um, I'm not going to list all the promo codes on the screen because they get they are changing and adding all the time. However, if you go to a website called afk.global uh, forward slash AFK journey codes, you will be able to find all of the codes that are currently in circulation. Um, there are plenty of guides out there. If you just type into Google or a search engine, AFK Journey Redemption Codes, you should be able to find this page. When you want to redeem a code, you go to promo code. I'm going to type in, I've got a few that I haven't actually entered. So AFK Journey, and the capitalization doesn't matter. AFK Journey Viva, boom, treasure found. I think I've got a couple of other ones. AFK Journey TGT, boom. AFK Journey VG. AFK Journey VG. Oh, I've already used that one. AFK Journey No GLA. Oh, I clicked off again. AFK Journey No GLA. Boom, some more. AFK Journey. They, they, they added loads just today. CMK. And AFK Journey DE. Have I already claimed that one? No, I have not. So, yeah. Loads of codes that are coming out practically every day. I would recommend that you just go and claim all of those resources pretty much instantaneously. Speaking of resources, let's talk a little bit about the resources that you're going to have uh, available to you. And there, there is plenty and loads and loads of resources that I, I, I won't have the time to kind of go through every single resource. But the primary resources that you're going to get your hands on are diamonds. You're going to get your hands on gold. You're going to get your hands on XP. You're going to get your hands on equipment. 
Um, and there's loads of other kind of like secondary resources that are involved with all of those ones. So the, the primary ones are golden XP. So golden XP give you the ability to level up your characters. As you can see, I don't have enough XP to level up this guy. Um, but there's plenty of other like secondary re resources that you know, can, need to take into consideration here. And when it comes to um, diamonds, these are kind of one of the premium currencies that you're going to use to spend things on. Now, there is a, a good temptation. So for instance, when you're trying to find new uh heroes there is a temptation to use the diamonds to buy invite letters personally i wouldn't actually do that um only if you have a massive excess of diamonds i actually think you should save your diamonds for the guild store um simply because the guild store has got stuff at a discounted rate and if you're patient you'll get more value out of your diamonds buying in the guild store than you would doing anything else so diamonds primarily used in my opinion for guild store purchases but you can also use them for uh, invite pools it is 3000 diamonds for 10 invite pools which you'll burn through them really quickly whereas if you're using them in the guild store you'll get a slightly higher value and a slightly higher return for your money when using diamonds in that way um there are other ways to use diamonds as well that will get you more resources so for instance afk progress you can use diamonds to uh do afk progress it comes when it comes to certain battle modes as well which we'll talk about later you can challenge and use 10 diamonds to uh, go into a challenge like this so i've got another i've got another extra arena challenge per day which is good for climbing the pvp ladder so those are what i'd actually use diamonds on afk progress a couple of times a day arena tickets and then guild purchases using them on invite letters is not a particularly efficient way especially because you're given quite a lot of free invite letters throughout your opening few days in the game um you know, I wouldn't worry too much about spending diamonds on invite letters. I would use them much more conservatively because that will last you much longer and it will ultimately impact your progress much more the further that you go. I would say about using your diamonds on this AFK progress thing here, though. Diamonds are a finite and continuous resource. The higher AFK journey level you get, the more you're going to get for those diamonds. Obviously, it ultimately, it's going to be relative to the point that you are in your account. So ultimately... A 50 diamond spend at AFK Jane level 50 might still be worth it because it's going to accelerate your progress a bit further. But obviously, the, the, the point in these games is it gets slowly and slowly and slowly towards a more of a bottleneck. And so the spend on premium currency becomes a little bit more effective the further that you get into the game. So that's kind of like what I'd do with diamonds ultimately. Um, right, let's talk a little bit about some basics of team building and synergies now. Okay, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the resonance hall in terms of actual gameplay the resonance hall is essentially where you're going to house most of your heroes so with the reson so with the resonance hall um the only reason the resonance kind of matters because obviously like most of your uh heroes are going to stay at a relatively consistent level and for the most part i would recommend with resonance that you tend to level level everything up evenly you can level one thing up but you can't go 10 levels above your resonance level so i could not get cessia to level 87 or 88 sorry uh, because you'll be 10 levels above my resonance level so i recommend that you tend to level everything up evenly if you can so i'm not actually going to level up cessia anymore i'm just going to level up some of the others i actually should have really put some levels into thorin because he's my main tank resonance like the hands of resonance do matter based on the type of content that you're playing if you're not switching out your main story heroes put your main story heroes in the hands of resonance and you will they will benefit from the increased levels however if you're using units from outside your uh, hands of resonance then they will only benefit from your overall resonance level this can be very important in dream uh boss fights because certain heroes are better and you wouldn't use them for your main campaign so you may want to switch out certain heroes in your hands of resonance when you're doing particular types of content other than that your hands of resonance are just there to level up uh, and passively and passively level up your entire collection the resonance hall essentially means that your lowest level hero will grant that same level to every other hero in your collection you only need to level up five heroes at a time that does not count to their rarity or their ascendancy level which is specific to each hero we're just talking about the levels that you use uh, hero essence for gold and xp tomes so ultimately in this area it doesn't really matter what you do you can have just basically have your special five hands of resonance and yeah it, it's, it's just kind of personal preference what you can change though is your squad your squad settings these are the these are the heroes that will follow you around when you're questing i of course am a man of culture 
So I am going to pick all of the waifus. There we go. Man of culture. Uh, so that is my questing squad. This is a good place to talk a little bit about team compositions, though, because... Actually, no, let's do, it in a, let's do it in an AFK progress. I'll talk about AFK progress in just a minute. Let's jump into a battle. So, this is what happens when you're setting up for battle. There are a few things that you get taught when you are learning the game. A lot of it is about kind of um, looking at, okay, so who's attacking who? We can see that my units are going to be focusing two separate ones. Let's say I put OD on this side. It will see that I've got two people focusing this side, three people focusing, focusing this side. We can look at the other way around as well. Uh, and we can see that everybody is focusing Thorin right at the front here. Um, there are lots of other things. You can choose the heroes to be replaced on your lineup. Uh, you can also just take all heroes out and reset if you want to. The other thing to note is that you have a set of spells that you can use. These are um, artifacts or something like that. I think they're called artifacts. Uh, and you have five to choose from, or at least there's probably, I think there's six to choose from in total. I've only unlocked five. The best one by most metrics is confining spell. So if you have confining spell, I would uh, recommend that you use it. That is generally the best one uh, in terms of how m most people think. Um, it just gives you an attack increase, a HP increase, and it deals damage to enemies and imprisons them periodically, um, which is good because essentially it kind of like sees them a little bit, which is great. So when you're building a team, you've got a couple of things to think about. Um, there are faction strategies, which you can see down here. So when there are three, uh, at least three, uh, members of a faction from the same faction in your team attack and hp of all the deployed heroes will go up by a certain percentage um celestials and hypogeans which are uh, i'll talk about those in a moment they are kind of a rare faction that you probably won't unlock until you've played the game for quite some time they can be considered as heroes from any faction so they can be slotted in quite nicely to most compositions for each celestial or hypogean on your team all deployed heroes actually get an extra attack and HP percentage. I'm going to show you what this looks like in real time. So let's say that we want to play, we can play a full Graveborn team, right? So each hero has its own faction. So this is like a full Graveborn team, which you can see here. If I play five Graveborn heroes, I'm going to get a 22% increase in attack and defense. That might seem awesome. It might seem awesome on paper, but most of the time you're limiting yourself quite heavily if you're trying to play a faction comp because the unique abilities and the unique roles that certain heroes play more than make up for the gap in percentage uh, HP and attack increase. The most common strategy that you tend to see employed is that you'll have three from one faction and then you'll have two from another faction. My personal favorite is this composition at the moment. I use this for pretty much all of my... Um, PvE content. It's two from the Mauler faction and three from the um, three from the uh, Graveborn faction. However, you could potentially add another Graveborn in here. So I don't know. Let's say that we were going to run Sylvina. She's not great in PvE, but that would increase it up to eighteen percent, for instance. But primarily, most people tend to sort of uh, the, the general consensus is that two and three is a good balance point between balancing. The certain unique abilities that each hero provides, as well as getting a decent attack and HP boost. It is 14% out of possible 22%. So just over half of what you could get, but you do get the benefit of having a, a sort of a more diverse set of abilities on your side of the field. There is something also else worth noting. You have um, essentially a cycle of factions here. So increase 15% damage when your target is weak to your faction and decreases 15% damage when your target is strong against your faction. So, as you can see here, Graveborn are good against Lightbearers, but they are weak against uh, Wilders. So, you will, you will take increased damage from Wilders, and you'll deal decreased damage to them. You will take, uh, you'll deal increased damage to Lightbearers, and you'll take uh, decreased damage from them. And there is no interaction between Maulers and Graveborn, which is why a Mauler and Graveborn composition is generally a good way of covering each other's weaknesses, because... Maul Maulers are weak to Lightborn, but then you have the Graveborn. Uh, Maulers are weak to Lightbearers, but you have the Graveborn to make up for that. And then the Maulers are good against Wilders, whilst Graveborns are weak to them. So that's why people tend to kind of mix the opposite factions in a lot of cases, because it helps make up for some of the weaknesses. If you want to know what type of faction um, the enemy is, you can click on it. This just says Other. So this is a PvE monster, so it doesn't make a difference. These are all just Others. Um, and yeah, ultimately, it doesn't make that much of a difference. So that is kind of how you build a comp. In terms of roles in a team, there is 
generally i i would encourage you to try and test but there is a very basic formula that you need to adhere to at the very least you need to have at least one tank unit and if you're interested at what a unit is designated as a role in the game you'll see here so um it corresponds with uh itemization which i'll talk about in a moment but uh the tanks have this kind of shield icon on them um marksmen which are ranged damage dealers have this kind of bow and arrow on them you have supports which have these kind of like i guess like i don't know what they like look like sort of like antlers or some sort of staff looking thing you have another staff for mages which again another form of dps you have rogues which have the kind of the dagger you have warriors which have kind of the axe you have generally want to have one tank one support and one dps at the very least then it's kind of up to you how you use those other slots most people re recommend that you go for um two dps at the very least uh you can have a support and then you have you can have what's called a specialist um specialists generally tend to be these flex units that do something beneficial for your team um i'm running three dps one support and one tank but you could run um i know i could get rid of I don't know, let's say I get rid of Viperion and put in something different, right? But this is, just, this is the comp that makes sense for me. But if you've got a tank, if you've got one healer or support, and you've got some DPS, that's generally where you want to be. Some people run a double tank composition. For instance, people like to run like Lucius and as like a secondary off tank. He's not as strong as Thorin in tanking, but he can heal and shield, which is quite nice. There's just lots of different ways that you can kind of play this, and I would encourage you to experiment and have a go with uh, as much as you can. But this is the general comp that I am running at the moment. In terms of how you want to set things up, it really depends on the way you want to play the strategy out. In this case, I'm quite happy for Thorin to take all of the heat, but you might want to split things up. And actually, to be honest with you, given that they are higher level, it's usually a best, it's usually a good idea to split the damage because Thorin might just die too quickly versus higher levels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the damage across the three. You can see where they're attacking. I can see that my focus is on the first front too, so I'm generally being a bit more focused. Um, I could try and burst down a single target by putting Odi on this side and just have my um, and just have my Cessia on this side. That's probably what I'm going to do. And I'll split the focus on my own team as well. I'm going to pause quickly. In battle, there are two ways to play this. You can turn this off, and what that means is that when you have your ultimate, you can then choose to do it yourself. Or you can turn this on, and it just means that people will auto-combat for you. I generally, unless I'm in a really hard level, tend to just leave auto-combat on and have a 2 times speed modifier on as well. And as you can see, that was a relatively simple uh, stage takedown for me, despite being slightly lower level, which is perfectly fine. Cool. That is basically everything about the basics of combat and team building. Let's now talk a little bit about um, leveling up and also equipment. So artifacts, as I mentioned, there are, I've got you're up to six, but there are five unlocked. You will be able to uh, level these artifacts up but we're using primarily gold, but essentially, eventually, it comes down to finding... Um, so I can't actually show you what it is, but essentially, you get these artifact fragment type things that essentially are needed to sort of get the higher levels. I'm obviously using confining spell for the most part. When it comes to leveling up heroes, you have essentially XP. And I'm going to see if I can claim... Uh, let me just see if I can claim some uh, AFK progress. I'll just use 200 just for the sake of... Um, just for the sake of this video. Let's go here. And let's say I want to level up. I actually want to raise my resonance level. So let's say I want to level up OD. We'll level him up like that. I'll level up him. And I need like 1k more experience to raise my resonance level. Let's... Um, I'm not going to get it. We'll get it. We'll get it later. It's not a problem. Oh, wait, no, wait, here we go. I got enough. Boom. So I've raised my resonance level to 77. Everything is 77. That's the one way to level up your heroes. The other one, the other way to do, and I'm actually going to do this now, is you can ascend them. Now, ascension can be done via two mechanics. Ascension can be done using soul fragments for that hero. Those can be pulled via invite letters. Your duplicates go towards soul fragments, which you can essentially then use to ascend certain heroes you also get acorns which you can see here acorns are, are a slightly more uh, cost you a bit more to use but they can be used for ascension as well so let's say i'm going to ascend my uh Cessia to mythic i was actually putting off doing this because i didn't really want to ascend Cessia to mythic but i'm doing it for the sake of the video uh, and you can see down here 
um you can get these soul sigils they're called soul sigils rather and you can get them from recruitment so i now need soul sigils to get uh, uh Cessia to mythic plus equipment this is really important uh, and i won't i will stress this enough you can level up your heroes and you then get to a point in the game and you're like why am i struggling like why is my power level low but i'm like the same level as the stuff that i'm fighting it's probably because you forgot to do your equipment equipment you you generally find it in the uh in the world you'll get it from afk uh, grinding you'll get it from chests you'll get it from rewards whatever always try and make sure that you're auto equipping the best possible equipment that you have for your units i neglected to forge for a very long time i don't want to forge rogue because i don't use rogue what have i got the lowest on um i don't know marksman right i neglected to forge actually do you know what i'm going to go for rogue i neglected to forge for a very long time do it there is no point not forging it costs gold but gold is you get an abundance of gold i've got i've got like 3 million point 3.5 million gold here it's only costing me 20k to forge forge the upgrades they actually contribute a huge amount to your power level and usually what you'll find is if you're really struggling with a certain level you probably need to go and forge more equipment and raise your power level through that equipment your power level is a combination of your hero's ascendancy your hero's level and the equipment that you have as well as obviously how you field your composition that's the general basic tldr of kind of like the the power level that you're going to put out onto the field and that power level which as you can see here so um let's jump in this is a power level of 50k right if i go here you'll see that despite these guys being above me in levels i have a 15k power advantage on them which to be completely frank with you is quite a large power advantage um so you're just going to see me probably blast through this and it's because a good chunk of your power level also comes from your equipment which is really important to keep uh, leveling up at the same time alongside your hero so don't neglect your equipment it is really important okay so after that let's talk a little bit about some of the welcome packages and some of the things that you're going to get presented with there are there are there are quite a lot of free stuff that you're given um for just playing the game and you're going to get to this uh, this point here where you will also be offered a hero selection chest. Out of these four, you'll get offered. I personally, if you don't always have already have Rowan, he's really good. Erion is really good in PvP, but maybe not so good in PvE, and so is Igor. If you're looking for a general catch-all, though, I would say that Rowan is pretty good if you don't already have him. That would be my choice out of the four of those. Brutus is probably the least useful. Um, he's not as powerful in AFK Journey as he was in AFK Arena. You'll also have the all heroes available where you'll be able to just pick up heroes and like every day you'll log in you'll you'll get something so there's going to be rewards pretty much all the way all the way through for logging in um you're going to basically be able to grab every single a tier hero that is, exists just by logging in which is great um and there's a couple of other things that you've got forward journey i can't even do primal lord just yet there's also loads of stuff for following uh, people have often asked me like what would you purchase now i wouldn't recommend purchasing as much as i have i purchased a lot just to try and get enough to make content on quickly that's kind of the way it is with youtube sometimes you kind of have to have the stuff to make the content on so i purchased pretty much everything the esperia monthly is very high um impact you get a lot of diamond rewards and if you go for the premium gazette you'll also get loads of um loads of free kind of like uh epic pool cards as well so these are quite good value for money if i'm honest with you the growth bundle is also really good value for money um so those are the ones that i would go for if i was going to go for anything i would actually avoid buying these bundles for the time being you don't actually need most of these resources but really just go for the kind of the battle pass purchases they're the ones that are going to serve you best and get you the most value for money if you're if you're interested in taking this game seriously on the long run in terms of other areas where you want to claim resources as you're playing through the campaign you will also have these exploration uh you've had these exploration rewards which you can find here you'll see that i've got 100 on everything so far i'd recommend that you just go and explore and find all of the different things it's basically just finding the chests on the map which sometimes are locked behind puzzles but are mostly locked behind encounters and they're sort of on, on different areas on the map and you'll get some rewards just for exploring the map i'm currently in dark forest 2 but you can see that i've covered pretty much the whole of the first map so far 
and yeah i've got most of the rewards that's another good way to just generate some free rewards alongside the codes that you've got as well as some of the free stuff that you're being given okay so what have we covered so far let's just do a little recap we've covered some settings we've covered promo codes we've covered a little bit about how to set up a team what to build a team um how to set up your resonance hall equipment uh we've looked at some of the stuff that you can purchase we've looked at uh some of the rewards that you can pick up on the map as well those are all great next thing is this afk progress down here afk progress is something that a lot of new players forget exists what this does is whilst you're logged off it generates you free resources over time um and the way that you increase the resources that you pick up is by increasing your afk level which as you can see here it goes up the further and further now uh, what will often happen is you'll forget about it and then you'll be like oh i need to increase my afk level don't forget about your afk level um but there is a really nice once you get to i think afk level 10 or afk level um 20 you basically get this where you can auto battle and essentially what happens is i'm going to take my hands off the keyboard i'm going to walk away from the computer and i'm going to let this play out for as far as it can go i'll probably speed up this part of the video uh, and you guys it basically will just clear as many levels as you possibly can they really do make this as afk as possible which is great but you want to increase this afk level because it, it essentially is going to be uh, impacting the amount of resources that you generate. It'll, it'll massively impact um, your residence, uh, your, the ability to kind of up your residence in general. It's just something that you need to do alongside the campaign. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit about what you should be doing at the start of the game anyway, uh, and how you can kind of maximize your free-to-play income. But definitely your AFK levels, you should push them. Now I'm going to go quickly go away for a few minutes. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, as you can see, this has been going on for quite some time. Um, I'm going to stop it after this one just because we've basically done 10 AFK levels by myself and I'm still not really struggling at this point. Um, I will probably do this a little bit later on and just push it as far as I can go it. Generally, what I do, though, is I leave it to AFK um, until it basically fails. And when it fails, it, I know that I probably have to do something manually. But as you can see, I'm still um, battling kind of way below my current power level which is fine and once you complete certain levels you'll get these little rewards that you can see at the top there and one of the rewards that i just got there was an equipment chest i think i thought i got an equipment chest anyway um you can go to your inventory and have a look in your inventory by the way you can quick recycle so you can basically recycle old stuff and it'll give you new forging materials which is important uh it looks i thought i got a did i get a chest here uh, so these are these are uh faction acorn selection boxes um I'm going to hold I'm holding on to these until I know what I want to ascend at a certain point we have 10 invite letters which is quite nice um but yeah there we go speaking of invite letters once I've just claimed practically everything that I can um speaking of invite letters let's now use this to talk a little bit about your mystical house and collecting new heroes that's kind of everything that we need to talk about when it comes to afk progress you just need to push it as far as you can whenever you can let's go over to mystical house uh, in your mystical house the mystic collection is just that's not that important it's just about um some of the bonuses that you get for doing certain things in the game you can't actually click on anything that generates anything important there the two main things are mail which you can basically claim stuff that you get given for free you have emporium which i've talked a little bit about before but there's basically um things that you can buy for instance here the arena store is really good because you can buy soul fragments for certain people so for instance um soul sigil Cecia. if i want to push her up another level i can do that here which is obviously a great place to do it um i've got rowan i've got uh hewin which are also quite nice but i think i'm probably going to pick up Cecia. we have the recruitment store which you can use your recruitment letters so every time that you uh recruit or send out invite letters you get this resource up here which you can spend to get uh fragments you can spend to get acorns you can also spend to get stargazing globes which are quite important as well um that's the emporium basically it's where you spend everything like i said earlier with diamonds it's kind of where you want to spend your diamonds so let's have a look at recruiting so uh, there is this one here this is called the um rate up recruitment this basically gives you an increased chance of finding a certain hero in terms of valha 
Uh, I fell into the trap of reading a Reddit thread where they were like, oh god, yes, you need to get Valor. I haven't, I've barely used Valor. I think she's pretty solid in PvP. She is a good answer in certain uh, PvE scenarios where you need to take out a backline. Uh, but if you don't need to take out a backline, I probably wouldn't worry about Valor, if I'm honest with you. She is, she's okay. She's decent. You have all hero recruitment, which basically is your standard recruitment. This is the one that you can use uh uh diamonds to do and there's something really important that you need to do here it's called wish listing this is my wish list um it's kind of what i'm aiming for um i'm going to talk through my wish list so we've got i haven't actually at obtained her so what i might do is i might switch her out so i can obtain i want to try and obviously you want to try and maximize the heroes that you don't have uh, i don't really care about light bearers to be honest with you what i'm actually aiming for on light bearers is um these two so uh, we've got Marit, I think it's Marily, and we've also got uh, Corin. Those guys are very good in a mode called the Dream Realm, which I'll talk about again in a moment. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Maulers, what I'm really interested in on Maulers is, I don't actually have, I've not obtained these guys, so I'm actually going to switch that out. What I'm interested, really interested in, in, in Maulers is Smokey and Mirky and Odie. Those are the two that I'm really interested in here. I own everything else, so now I'm just going to switch out until I can get some of the stuff that I don't own. Um, essentially, wish list, which you'll see. Um, if you get an S level or A level hero, it will be a hero from your wish list. So basically, um, you will get this. If you get offered a uh, an S level or an A level hero, it will come from your wish list, which is why uh, you need to kind of make sure you have your wish list set up to the way you want it. So you kind of want to have the best tier heroes on here that you can kind of afford to go for so for instance i use smoky and mirky a lot they're very high tier in general so that's why i've got them on this list um, otherwise it's best to just include things that you don't already own um for instance actually i'm, I'm probably better off putting ronin on here because he's a little bit better so i'm going to put him on you can actually get copies of him anyway but i like him in terms of maulers i actually don't own a lot of the s tier maulers so i'm keeping smoky and mirky on because i want copies of his soul fragments um in terms of wilder uh, I have got Hewin, she's really nice. I've also got uh, Elrin, so I'm going to get that. I own pretty much the rest of the Wilders here. So the Wilders, uh, you know, they're, they're actually not that many super meta Wilders. In terms of Graveborn, I don't actually own Igor. So I really do want copies of um, Cessia and um, uh, and uh, Thorin. But I might swap out Cessia just for a little bit to get... I got here and we also don't have I don't even know what her name is Catherine or something and um, we've also got a uh, Viperion which is really nice and we've also got um who knows I'm actually going to swap that out because um she's quite good in PvP so basically you want to set up your your wish list because it's very important about how you pull heroes and then what you do is I, I generally tend to wait until I have 10 it just makes it easier and um every 40 I think you're guaranteed an S level hero but here you go I've got some copies of Odie, I've got some copies of Corin. that's not too bad. And I can also obviously use diamonds for it if I want to. With epic recruitment, essentially you can set up a uh, prize pool, um, which as you can see, it just increases the percentage. So your epic hero wish list, and so yeah, I actually didn't set up my A level hero wish list, which is really silly of me, but I have got Corin on there. They pull from your they pull from your wish list on the other one, which is great. Um so this just basically means that you have a 5% chance to get something on this wish list. You have a 5%, 18% uh, chance to get something on this wish list. I might actually switch some of this stuff out now. I might even put some of the stuff on that I've not obtained already. So let's just switch out to some stuff that I've not obtained just so I can get one copy of them for the time being. Um, it's better to actually pick up because I actually don't have him. I might go back. I thought I actually owned him. Quickly, let me go back to my wish list. Yeah, okay, I don't actually own him yet. That's fine. So you want to set up your wish list and obviously epic recruitment. I'm just going to recruit one. Might as well. I've only got one. Might as well use it. Throws out 10 cards, but I only actually recruit one here. It's a 5% chance for an S tier. I get an A tier, which is a 15% chance. And it is another Corin, which is good because Corin is an important character for the Dream Realm. We then have the Stargazer Station, which you get once you think you've done like 400 pulls. Um, I've got three Stargazers and you can basically choose your... Uh, hero choice i've not found any of these but i would say that um i can't even remember this guy's name rainer rainier he's probably the best one that you can go for to begin with because he's just very kind of generally good consider one of the best heroes in the game let's stargaze you got to tap the stargaze it's really uh it's really cringe you got to go through this whole thing and i got some acorns 
Great. Let's go again. Got some acorns. Let's go again. I got that thing. Great. Now we've got none left. Um, I've got 17 until I'm guaranteed uh, Arania. So there you go. It, his name was right there. Wow, I missed that. So that's generally what you need to do when you are um, recruiting. And that's a very important part of the game. If you don't have your wish list set up, you are doing something wrong. Uh, I think I can actually upgrade this little dude. He's pretty solid in some situations, so it's worth it's worth up. You, you, there's never a reason not to ascend a hero when you have the parts to ascend them. So you should always ascend a hero when you get the option to do so. Uh, and that is practically everything in the mystical house that you need to be aware of. The next thing which I'm going to cover is guilds. Um, we can have a look at my guild here. I don't know how many people I've actually got in my guild at the moment. I don't think I've got that many people in my guild at the moment. I've got three, so if you want to join my guild, um, I'm generally looking to recruit people who are above 200k, but uh, if, you're, if you're watching this video and you, you feel like you're going to get towards that level, then please feel free um, to come in. The guild is really important. You have the guild chests, which essentially get distributed based on how much you input, uh, and you have the contribution rankings here. But the most important part of the guild is battle drills. So battle drills are this thing that you do as a guild to progress overall. Uh, I'm going to show you a battle drill because there's some things that you need to be aware of. In battle drills, you have stamina. Um, it requires a certain amount of stamina to get through a battle drill. In my case here, um, I don't have enough stamina on my DPS units. You can only choose five units to take to battle drills. I would recommend that you do not take two supports to battle drills because you'll find that you have a uh, an inability playing the meta way to do this to actually progress as hard as you can and maximize your stamina regen. But let's just show you something. Have I got something here that would be better overall? Attack 2.5%. Yeah, I'm just going to go for this one. Right, so... Let's do this, let's do this. Let's just hope that we can kind of pull through. The, the kind of the meta way to do these drills is to use only three of your heroes at a time because you want to maximize the amount of stamina that you have available to you. Using three of your heroes, if you win, you will get some stamina back, which is great. Uh, and essentially, you can maximize how far you can push in a single day. Your stamina gets reset every single day, and you can see at the bottom how much it costs you to actually go into a battle. I probably am not going to be able to do this because I don't have any DPS. I'm running with two supports here, so Thorin is basically my full DPS. Your formation is incomplete. We don't care about that. Um, we just have to see if Thorin will actually get good ults off here. Uh, he's basically my main form of DPS, so we just got to hope that Thorin is kind of the one that pulls through. That's why we want Thorin at the front, taking the majority of the damage. We really want him to cast his ult as much as possible. Because um, the rest of the guys really don't do any damage. <laughs> so it's all about Thorin. He just needs to keep using his ult whenever he can. Uh, he's doing okay, though. Um, hopefully the fireballs are uh, going well. This is, the pro this, is, this is where the problems start to come through. When Thorin runs into the middle of the enemy team, that's actually pretty good. I think we actually did it. Gr goodness gracious. Uh, changing out to the fireball spell was better than running with what I had previously. Boom, we get a little chest key. And as you can see, if I go to battle again... Um, we only have uh, enough resource on Smokey and Mickey. So Smokey and Mickey's not going to be able to solo this. I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow. But yeah, using three at a time so that you can like swap out. Sometimes you can duo it. There are certain um, comps that can duo it, but there we go. And every time you get a key, you can use it on a chest of valor. There's a Stalwart's Horde, which basically has like a generally good chance to pick up diamonds or invite letters. Or you can use Adventurer's Treasure, which has a bit more of a varied loot pool, but there's like a higher chance of hitting the absolute lottery. I get some acorns, great. The the most, I'd say the better one is to use the Stalwart Horde. It just has a sort of more consistent pool of um, rewards. Whereas this one is a bit more sort of all over the place in terms of what you get. Like getting two acorns feels unbelievably common. But there you go. And you also have this reputation treasure which you'll get for pushing as far as you can. Uh, and then what you have is you have a certain amount of attacks you can do per day and you progress all the way up to the final and you've got... Um, uh, well, apparently ends in one day and five hours, so I haven't got very far here. But I've only just joined my, uh, I've only just joined my uh, guild or made my guild. There is also a buff; it increases the attack for allied heroes. So you just need to pay attention to that. It can sometimes help 
with the heroes that you're fielding. And then your command center, once you hit level 10, you'll be able to put 10 in, which gives you the ability to push a lot harder. And you can swap out between all the heroes that you've got. If you want to switch a hero, so for instance, I probably don't want to run with two supports. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is switching him out for OD. Yeah, but I don't, he, he comes in with zero stamina. So we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow anyway to use him. And that's the big thing you need to do in your guild. That gets you uh, a lot of uh, rewards and it's really important. The social things in this game are actually very important. Right, then. Okay, so now we're going to look at battle modes. Now, something that I didn't mention that is important, uh, obviously the AFK journey is important, but you should also try and push through the campaign. You get quite a bit of rewards for going through the campaign. I And what will happen is if you level up too far, far past the campaign, you will get to the point where you just basically click and one-shot mobs on the map. And it's not that interactive, and it just feels like more of a chore to walk through clicking F or tapping on all the mobs. Uh, I'm now at the point where I actually have to make those fights happen, which gives me a bit more tactical interest in the game. But definitely progress through the campaign, do all the side quests, explore as much as you can on the map. And then we have battle modes. So, we have... Um, battle modes and they generally i think they get unlocked based on the afk stages that you're at so the, the higher the afk stage the more battle modes that you open there are ones that are really important like arena and there are ones that are really important like dream realm we have battle drills obviously which uh, are part of the guild arcane labyrinth which is a bit more of fun these just give you invite letters and there's the legend trial which are like individual you, you have to use teams from certain factions to clear things which i found really interesting in afk arena and actually i found them quite interesting in afk journey as well let's start off with dream realm there are i believe four dream realm bosses if i go to the the rankings you'll be able to see yes yeah, so there is snow stomper king croker skyclops and necro dragon every different dream boss has a uh, certain pool of heroes that are better um so particularly in this case ah yeah i mean this is one of the, this is one of the situations where having um I, do you know what let's I, let me show you i did say like resonance doesn't really matter but actually resonance does matter for some things if you're not going to use the heroes um so let's just say i actually want to build my my proper team so i'm going to move od over there so he's level 81 um i'm going to move uh kruger because kruger always dies i'm gonna do you know why it's only it's only the level 81 that matters at the moment so i'm just gonna move od because he's on my team to level 81 everyone else is level 80 uh 77 that's fine right dream realm so that now means that my od will actually be level 81 on the field which you can see which is quite good he's a very high form of dps there are certain heroes that are uh, better in dream realm situations because dream realm tends to be a single in like single enemy encounter um Heroes that you would classically not actually use in, a, in other scenarios. So, for instance, Kruger, who I just managed to click off the field, he has got a single target uh, defense, a physical defense reduction debuff on his ult, which is great. You have Corin, who has got really high single target DPS. Odie is pretty good in most situations, but again, very good in single target DPS situations as well. And you'll find that certain heroes just shine. If you're interested in finding out which our heroes are good in which dream realm encounter i'm going to link a tier list in the description below that tier list will tell you all you need to know about heroes for certain aspects of the game and if you just sort by in fact do you know what i might even just show you give me a second so this is pride uh, pride win this is a website that i use for all of my tier list um kind of research and you can see here that uh, on the top you have different areas of the game so early story mid story late story sky cops croaker necro dragon and snow stomper boom necro dragon you're going to see rainier corin tamizia marily and kruger a very high tier and then od is pretty decent here as well i'm keeping od in because he's got a quite a high ascension level for me um, and then you've got smoky and mirky who's also decent as well you do need at least one support i find for most of these so this is the the, uh, the comp that i'm running with i've already beaten the first version of this boss what happens is once you beat the, beat the first version you just get a slightly harder version to beat where you need a higher power level um and so generally i tend to build teams and experiment with teams from the tier list try and use the highest tier and even if like my kruger has no ascension really but I still use him because that physical damage reduction debuff is very important for DPS. And obviously I'm using um, Tamisia here who just basically pulls... The reason Tamisia is really good is she kind of pulls him away. So she turns the boss around, which kind of reduces the damage that he does, which is obviously very, very good. Um, and as you can see, 
we are doing quite well here. We will probably will get one shot in a moment. Doing as best as we can. This is actually the furthest that I've ever got, by the way. I'm using a very, very specific dream team for this. We've got Kruger who gets another debuff on. That might be the final debuff for Kruger, which is actually really nice. Getting quite close. I don't think we're going to beat this, but this is definitely going to get me some more rewards from what I had previously. Partly because I've actually leveled up a lot of my heroes. We're down to nine. This is actually getting really close. Tamisi is going to go over the back line, try and pull them away. We have a bit of healing going on. We're going to pull it away again, but everyone just gets one shot right at the end. That is the furthest that I've got. Um, and that should now get me some more rewards. Not quite enough for the weapon selection chest uh, or enough for three invite letters, but it's put me in the current ranking which is 91 on the server. So you've seen that here live. And you get up to, I think you get a few chances per day and you can increase the chances that you get per day based on certain metrics. Arena is really important. So as I mentioned, Arena is a great way to find specific soul fragments. Um, you can see that your power level is up in the top left. Um, and you know, you have three people to select from. You have a lower, uh, a lower uh, honor, a mid honor and a high. I'm gonna call it honor. I have no idea what the actual ranking is, but a low points, a mid points and a high points. The higher points that you challenge, the more that you'll gain for a win. I'm gonna show you my PVP team. This is my current PVP team. I personally really like it. It is Viperion, it is Cessia, it is uh, Hewin, it's um, Rowan, and then it's also Thorin as my main tank. That, I personally really like this. It's very heavy on healing. It's very much about just making sure that your backline survives as long as possible. And then Viperion and Cessia do a lot of AoE damage. And you can see I just absolutely... I mean, I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm quite a bit higher power level than these guys, obviously. Um, so I should actually try and push my arena as much as possible. But just my favorite arena comp. And it, I've, I think I've only lost like one or two games um, since playing arena but you should look to push arena as high as you can you get some nice rewards for it so you might as well it's a really good thing to do on a day-to-day -day basis and and honestly like i said it's another good form of using your um crystals so this guy's 59k do you know what we're gonna try it it's it's above my power level but i'm pretty confident in my comp so this guy has got valor she's a bit better in pvp and she can obviously also snipe the back line but we have got double healer which is actually really nice we are very energy intensive so um, that's why we've got um, Rowan, uh, Cessia and Viperion are both very energy intensive uh, units. So there we go, Viperion. Boom, that's huge. Um, Cessia is going to... My Cessia hasn't actually cast yet, which is crazy. I have no idea how my Cessia hasn't cast. But Viperion uh, is going to cast again, which is actually really nice. Uh, we're going to get healing come down. We have Thorin versus the world, which actually should be okay. Hewin... Okay, no, I didn't. I uh, I did not do very. I actually didn't position very well on this one. Um, but I actually think I'm going to try again. I think that's mostly down to my positioning. I grouped up a little bit. I didn't. I didn't actually look that they had a um, Assessia. But we're going to go again. Uh, 63k. That might be a little bit out of my reach. I don't want to go 47k. 54k. Let's try again. I want to get something a little higher than me. 56k. All right kind of an even level let's have a look at the heroes they've got they've got viperion they've got cessia so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to spread out this time round. um they're also running valor they are running a triple dps one support um i'm not running any backline threat uh but i'm kind of hoping that the energy generation kind of gets me there there is my energy generation we've got thorin going in he should get a really big one here he hits and i think he actually cancels his thorins which is really nice cessia drops much better this time round. Um, and then we basically clean up. He was a little higher in power level than me, but just didn't have enough to get through the double healing. So that's why I quite like double healing versus like a one assassin comp, because you can kind of make one of the assassins rendered rel relatively useless. And we get ourselves an upgrade to Adept 3, which is great. Increases your daily rewards, etc. Um, boom. So Arena, really good to do on a day-to-day -day basis. On a duel and Arcane Labyrinth, I'm not going to go through, but they are fun modes that you can play. I would recommend both of them. They're very fun. They're like roguelikes, um, and they're definitely something to pass the time and do. So I definitely recommend that you do those as well. Obviously, just go and collect as much as you can throughout the, uh, the game as well. That feels like pretty much everything that we need to cover. Um, I feel like we've kind of touched base on most of the major things that you need to do in AFK Journey. It is then just a case of um playing through the game as long as you can and just kind of like enjoying it try not to go too fast like with me i've gone a little too fast i've covered a lot of content in a very short period of time um don't go too fast just enjoy it as you can um and join a good guild do some social stuff 
Um, do the world bosses together if you can. There is, um, as I said, there's a world boss that I've not actually, not actually had the chance to do yet. Um, but yeah, just enjoy it as much as you can and uh, don't read global chat. That's another, that's another really good tip. Don't read global chat. It's usually full of absolute weirdos. And there you go. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Uh, it's a good game, a great passive game to play. Lots of good stuff to do in the game as well. And hopefully more content will be coming, which will make it even more uh, fun uh, to play. That's everything that I've got to say. I'll see you soon.